If you purchased your Intel Edison as part of the mini breakout board, you've probably realized that the documentation on the Intel site isn't quite where it needs to be to get you started. There are forums and pages and PDFs spread all over, and you're left to dig through it and figure it out. In this microcast, I want to show you some of the steps to get everything set up and configured so that you can connect to your Intel Edison and play around in the Yocto Linux distribution. So Intel nailed the unboxing part. The Edison comes in a sweet box and opening it evokes a few oohs and ahs. That's about where it ends though. They have a getting started URL right under the box lid, which makes you think that they're really going to help you through the process, but unfortunately you're mostly on your own at this point. The link only has partially relevant instructions to the mini breakout, and even some of the relevant stuff has errors in it. Because of that, I created a guide that I wish I had the first time I set up my Edison, and want to share with you some of the things that I went through. If you intend to connect any external hardware to your Edison, you're going to need access to the GPIO pins. These are located underneath the Edison when it's mounted on the breakout board. You can individually solder wires to this, but I personally recommend breaking all of the pins out to a header for easy connections. This is really easy to do, even for beginners, so don't be afraid. The pins are standard 0.1 inch space, so any generic male header strip will do. All we need to do is break the header strips into 14 pin segments and install them side by side on a breadboard, as seen here. Make sure the long end of the header strip pins is in the breadboard so the short side is pointing up. This will be your jig for soldering. Place the breakout board onto the pins so that the USB connectors are on top. Soldering the headers in upside down will definitely ruin your day. The breakout should sit on the pins and feel nice and level. And if it's installed correctly, the header pins will just barely protrude from the holes. This ensures that they won't interfere with seating the Edison later on. If the pins stick out too far, then you've got your header strips installed upside down on the breadboard. Now for soldering, I highly recommend using a flux pen. It will help the solder flow into the joints. Take your time soldering and make sure you get a good solder flow on each joint and be careful not to over apply solder as it will ball up on the pin and not create a good joint. Here's what mine looked like when I was done. You can see that there are a few joints that aren't as nice as the others, but we should be okay. I used rubbing alcohol and a clean t-shirt rag to clean the flux up after soldering. You're definitely going to want to clean that up because it can corrode the board. With the header installed, it's time to seat the Edison onto the breakout board. Because of the mounting holes, it's pretty much impossible to install this thing the wrong way. Just be careful seating it as the 70 pin connector has very tiny contacts that can be damaged if you're not careful with it. You don't have to be super worried about bending anything or hurting anything, just exercise some caution. Get the Edison nice and level over the connector and push straight down on it, right about where the sticker is below the metal housing that says, what will you make? You should hear a good sounding click once it's seated properly. If you want, install the two nuts provided to hold the Edison in place, although the connector should hold it pretty steady. Once the Edison's installed on the breakout board and before we power it up for the first time, you're going to need to install some software and drivers. Now, I'm not going to walk through doing those because it's pretty self-explanatory. You download the various drivers, which include the FTDI drivers and the Edison drivers, along with a terminal emulator. On Windows, I recommend using PuTTY. The installations are really straightforward. I don't think I need to show those to you, but I have links down below in the description so you can get those. Once all the software is installed, it's time to hook everything up and power your Edison for the first time. There's two USB ports on the breakout board. The top one is used for communicating with your PC through the terminal emulator, and the bottom one can be used as a power source. And that's what I recommend for your first go. Just use a USB cable, connect it to your computer, and hook it into that. It's the easiest way to get power to the Edison. You do also have other powering options, which include jumper 21, which is right below the USB jack. You can provide 7 to 12 volts on that and then jumper two on the other side of the board where you can connect a lithium polymer battery. Once you have your Edison connected to your PC and the power's been applied, so you should have some green lights, uh, some of the green LEDs should be lit up on your breakout board, it's time to connect to it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into device manager here and if we expand this ports section, you should see a USB serial port and then in parentheses, there'll be a COM value. 
that's the COM port that you're going to use to connect to your Edison. And to do that, we're going to use PuTTY. So I'll drag PuTTY over here, minimize that. We're going to change this option to Serial. It's going to default to COM1, but in my case, I want to use COM4. And the speed is going to be 115,200. Once we have that, we're going to click Open. And it's going to give us a blank screen. At this point, you're going to hit Enter twice. And that brings you to a login. And the login by default is just root. Now you notice when I typed root, I ended up only getting the OOT. Now this is a defect in the Edison UART where if the Edison goes into low power mode, it's going to eat the first character that you type. And so sometimes you have to double type the first character. This is a super annoying defect that hopefully they will get fixed. Uh, but anyway, in this case, we'll just back it out and we'll do root and enter my password. And that brings me to a Linux prompt. Now, you won't have to type a password if it's your first time. I've already configured my Edison. Uh, so you'll normally just type in root and that will take you directly to the command line. And at this point, you're in the Yocto Linux distribution and you can start typing commands. The first thing that you're going to want to do is type in configure underscore Edison. Now the guide, the getting started guide that Intel provides says it's configure underscore Edison uh, dash setup, uh, which is actually incorrect. It does not recognize that command line argument. You're just gonna wanna type configure underscore Edison, and that's gonna walk you through things like naming your device. You see that I've named mine Sid Edison, uh, connecting to Wi-Fi. One of the tips on the Wi-Fi, when it searched for me the first time, it didn't find any networks. If you just hit zero, it will search again. It did end up finding my, my router and I was able to connect to that no problem. And so just follow through those prompts. Like I said, configure underscore Edison and that will get you all set up. And basically you are, you've got a, the Yocto distribution of Linux set up and ready to play with. Um, it comes with Node.js and NPM installed, and at this point, you are ready to start playing around with your Edison. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or send me an email. I'm happy to help. Hopefully, this helps you get started with your mini breakout a little faster than if you followed the Intel Getting Started Guide. And as always, happy hacking.